Hey, what's going on guys? It's Tom Mason here, back with another video. And today I'm over in Ireland, just down at one of the local nature reserves I know, uh, to get away from the computer, get away from the screen. You know, I've had so much editing on since being back from Botswana and Finland. It's just nice to be out with the camera. You know, sadly the uh, subjects haven't been too forthcoming. There's a few lovely bits around, but everything's just been a bit too far away. So I thought that whilst I was here, it'd be a great chance to answer a question I get asked all the time. And that's, Tom, what camera should I pick up to get started in wildlife photography? What should I look for? And what are the budget-friendly options when you just don't have too much to spend, but you want a great value camera that has top spec performance to help you when you're out shooting? So today, I'm just gonna answer just that. So when it comes to wildlife photography, a lot of people think that you need the most expensive high-end cameras to produce great images, but that's just not the case. You know, for me, I use cameras from the Nikon D3300 all the way through to the D5, and it really does just depend on the situation that I'm shooting and the types of images that I'm going for. You know, when I was camera trapping out in the rainforest, there's no way I'd be using D5s for that. But the D3100 that I got one of my final shots on, and that I'll put a link to here somewhere, is still one of my favorite images I made in the last couple of years. And it really does prove that you don't need the most expensive cameras to get great images of wildlife. But saying that, of course, if you do have the camera in your hand, there are certain things that you want to look for within that camera that are gonna help you when you're shooting out in the field. And there are four main areas that I would probably think about when you're picking up a camera. Now those four areas to me are the sensor quality, the autofocus, the ergonomics and the speed. And I think that if you have a camera that can cover all of those, you'll have a great tool to help you with your wildlife photography. So when it comes to choosing a camera, the first thing you've got to decide on is the sensor format that you're going after. Um, for me, as a general all-round nature shooter, someone who does landscapes, the portraits of wildlife, as well as environmental shots, I really like full-frame cameras. Um, they offer me a great range of kind of features. You get really nice quality dynamic range, uh, high ISO performance, and the fall off, um, especially when you're using those wide open apertures, is really, really beautiful. There are some options um, for DX as well. You know, DX is really useful if you're always going after those smaller birds, um, subjects that are always quite distant. It offers you that extra crop factor. Um, but for me, especially now that I've got the D850, that offers me the high resolution on top of all the other advantages of a full frame camera. Um, it really is a perfect package. But I know that that isn't a value solution. Um, but yeah, full frame doesn't have to be out of your budget um, if you're just getting started in wildlife photography. So outside of the camera sensor, the next thing to consider is the autofocus within any camera you're purchasing. And there's a few things that are good to look at uh, when picking up a new camera. Now, first, it is going to be the number of points that any autofocus system has. Uh, often in the lower tier models, you're going to have maybe 11 points, whereas contrast that to the pro models, you might have all the way up to like 500 autofocus points. Um, and they're really useful because they help acquire the focus and are more consistent in those tracking modes the more points you have. It also means that stuff like 3D tracking um, works better and largely um, it's just an all round better system. Now the second thing to think about within the autofocus system is the EV that it tracks down to. Um, you'll see the ratings on different cameras, but largely the lower it goes, the better it is. Um, you know, as wildlife photographers, we're often working in low light conditions. So having an autofocus that tracks to minus four EV rather than minus two means that you can work for longer into those low light conditions and still get those great images that you're after. Now, an extra kind of bit to add on is the idea of the customizable nature of any autofocus system. I've got a little video about how you can customize the D850 and the 500 that I'll stick up here. Um, but extra things about how you can map autofocus um, to have little shortcuts are really handy in any camera. They just mean that when you're working in the field, it's more ergonomic, it's quicker to use, and it means that you're more likely to nail those shots uh, when working on location. But there's a quick overview of the autofocus. Let's go on to the next thing. So next up for me are the ergonomics of a camera. Uh, having a camera that is comfortable in the hand is so important when working out in the field. But in addition to that, um, when talking about ergonomics, it's also about the button layout, the quality of the build and feel of the camera, and little things like the, um, the size of the viewfinder. Because you're using these features pretty much every single moment of the day, having a top tier professional level version really does aid you in your shooting um, and photography out in the field. You know, for me, I love to have 
um, the extra battery grip at the bottom, the large professional batteries, um, the fact that the whole camera is built of an magnesium or some sort of alloy means that it's going to take the bumps of life a little bit better. Large bright viewfinders make the viewing experience, composing everything like that more enjoyable. And just the whole quality of the camera um, means that it's just more rugged for working out in the field. Don't have to worry about um, kind of rain, snow, wind. I know it's weatherproof and it's going to deal with it. Additionally, you get extra features like dual memory card slots for backing up pictures or just for having that overflow for when everything's happening and you just don't have chance to kind of change that card. And that's why I really think that this is more important than the next feature, that's the frames per second. Now, of course, as a wildlife photographer, having a high frame per second is handy. There's moments when you know a kingfisher's diving, a bird's flying past, that you know having a higher frame per second means you get more pictures in any kind of instance. But a lot of the time the autofocus is more important in those situations that lock the focus, track the subject and mean that you can capture that decisive moment. Just pressing the button down and just getting a really high number of pictures doesn't mean you're really choosing the moment. Of course there's key times that it's really useful for but I definitely put the ergonomics ahead of just that high frames per second and that's why those large DSLRs really do lend themselves to wildlife photography. It means that of course they're not as lightweight and comfortable carry around but they do when you're working in the field provide those extra benefits that's great uh, for the daily shooting of wildlife photography so with all those things considered it looks like you're going to need a top end DSLR for wildlife photography but well how do you get one of those on a budget now of course if you go for a new camera you're probably not going to find that many options especially within a restricted budget constraint but if you go for the used market there are some fantastic bargains available now when i was looking for this camera i was i was scouting out uh wex used you know i've worked with wex for many years and they have an excellent service uh, for secondhand cameras you get a year's warranty and everything like that i know the guys very well and when i spotted the cameras after they lucky enough sent it out to me so i could kind of review it for a couple of months uh before doing this video they're not sponsoring it anyway they just lent me the camera and the camera in question is this the nikon d3 um, now this was a camera that you know changed photography in many ways it's got that high-end uh, full-frame sensor spaced around the 12 megapixel full-frame sensor you've got the full ergonomic body professional weather sealing everything like that 100% viewfinder 9 frames per second dual memory card slot it is a beast of a camera I know that because I had a d700 for many years um, and I know the sensors are exactly the same and I tell you what the quality of the images that came out of that were just fantastic and the fact that you've got the nine frames per second, the extended large professional battery as well, really makes this one hell of a camera to get your hands on. Um, and the price for this was absolutely amazing. This camera is available used for about 380 pounds. I mean, this one's got a few marks and kind of blemishes, but nothing that really would worry me. And of course, with a year's warranty, I know it's gonna be absolutely fine. There's ones available all the way up to kind of like 650 in much better condition, but I just think that is an absolute steal um, in terms of the kind of current climate for wildlife photography. And a 12 megapixel camera might seem a bit low for many people, but will easily print up to an A3 um, that's far more than most people will ever use. So certainly not something to worry about. But I didn't want to just kind of have this and show you some pictures from my old uh, D700 when I was shooting it. I wanted to shoot some kind of modern stuff with this. So I've been taking it about and shooting some pictures. I had an incredible moment with a peregrine falcon where I came downstairs and it was outside on the gravel. Grabbed the camera, ran upstairs, grabbed the D3 with a 70 to 200. My D850 as well with a 300 2.8. But I just got too close for the 302.8, so I was using the 70 to 200 on the D3. Didn't switch the cameras over, and the images that came out of it, I was super impressed with. Sent them all over to my image library, they were all accepted, proving that this thing can still hold its own uh, as a professional camera in the modern day and age, especially that price point. You know, you could pair it with the 300 f4 that i did a video about somewhere i'll put it here um, and you'd have a great wildlife photography system for under a thousand pound you'd have no excuses not to just get out and get shooting um, because you wouldn't really have to worry about upgrading this for a little while until you're really ready to invest in that next level up and a kind of brand new professional camera that really is going to take you to that next stage but of course if you're on a budget i think this is a brilliant place to start 
Now, if you've got any questions about wildlife photography cameras, anything like that, the D3, whatever, drop them in the comments below. More than happy to get back to you. Of course, if you've got any normal wildlife photography questions, of course, drop them below and I'll get back to you as well. Um, thank you very much for watching. You know, if you enjoyed this content, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Drop me a like if you found it helpful so that more people can see this. Um, and, you know, get out and grab yourself a great value camera. Get out find a local spot and go make some pictures because that's what wildlife photography is all about. But until the next one, get out, get shooting, enjoy your wildlife photography and uh, yeah, I'll see you soon.